Hello viewers, today we shall familiarize ourselves with the Parkes 3 step test. This test is also variously referred to as the Parkes Bielschowski 3 step test and the Parkes Helveston 3 step test. This test is an algorithm to help identify a weak cyclovertical muscle. The extraocular muscles other than the horizontal recti are the cyclovertical muscles and thus there are a total of 8 muscles, 4 in each eye. Step 1 is to determine the hypertropic eye. Step 2 is to determine whether the hypertropia is greater in right or left gaze. And step 3 is to determine whether the hypertropia is greater on right or left head tilt. These figures represent the various positions of gaze of both eyes. The agonist for elevation and adduction is the inferior oblique and for depression and adduction is the superior oblique. The agonist for elevation and abduction is the superior rectus and that for depression and abduction is the inferior rectus. Step 1 is to determine which eye is higher using the cover-uncover test. While the patient looks at a distant target, after straightening the head, if there is an abnormal head posture. In this case, the right eye is higher. This means that either the depressors of the right eye are weak, leading to unopposed action of the elevators or the elevators of the left eye are weak, leading to unopposed action of the depressors. So we have reduced the possible culprit to one of four muscles. Step 2 is to determine whether the vertical deviation is greater in right or left gaze. So here we see that the vertical deviation is less in right gaze and greater in left gaze. So there is weakness of one of the muscles acting in the left gaze. This would be either the obliques of the right eye or the recti of the left eye. So in this case, we have further narrowed down the possible culprit to one of two muscles, the right superior oblique and the left superior rectus. In step 3, also known as the Bielschowski head tilt test, the vertical deviation is assessed on head tilt about 30 degrees to either shoulder with the patient fixating at mid distance target on eye level. So here the vertical deviation is less on left head tilt and greater on right head tilt. So let's analyze this here. Each eye has a pair of intortus. Superiors are intortus. During intortion, the elevating action of one cancels the depressing action of the other, thus neutralizing vertical movement. Same case with the inferiors, which are extortus. So in this example, we have to choose between these two muscles, both of which are superiors and therefore intortus, and we know that the right eye intorts in right head tilt and the left eye intorts in left head tilt. Since the vertical deviation is occurring during right head tilt, the weak muscle belongs to the eye that intorts during right head tilt. That narrows down the culprit to the right superior oblique. The widely accepted criterion for a positive result is an increase in hyperdeviation of at least 5 prism diopters on tilting the head from the hypo to the hypertropic side. The results of the test can be worked out similarly for weakness of the other vertical muscles. So in a superior oblique palsy, there is ipsilateral hypertropia which is greater in contralateral gaze and greater on ipsilateral head tilt. In a bilateral superior oblique palsy, there will be hypertropia of each adducting eye on lateral gaze. And in the head tilt test, there is hypertropia of the left eye in left head tilt and the right eye in right head tilt. The three-step test is useful only in a single cyclovertical muscle palsy. However, the test is not infallible and one study found a sensitivity of only about 75% in unilateral superior oblique palsy. Also, one must be vigilant to make sure that one is not dealing with any of the conditions that mimic a positive test. The mimics can be remembered by the mnemonic, multiple cats and dogs seriously start multiple headaches. The M stands for multiple vertical muscle palsies which can be determined by additional tests which are described subsequently. The C stands for contractures or tightness of the vertical recti, commonly secondary contracture, blood fracture of the orbital floor, thyroid ophthalmopathy, etc. These errors are more common if the affected eye is used for fixation, which is again more common if the vision in the other eye is poor. 
Fixation of the affected eye can be determined by looking for a secondary deviation and the presence of restrictions by the force duction and active force generation tests. Asymmetric bilateral vertical muscle palsy typically occurs in bilateral superior oblique palsy that is so asymmetrical that the paresis in the milder eye is not evident. This can be uncovered either by measurement of reversal of hypertropia or a qualitative cover test in the oblique fields of gaze. A torsional misalignment of more than 10 degrees on double medox rod testing is particularly suggestive of bilateral fourth nerve palsies. Dissociated vertical deviation in one eye may mimic a contralateral superior rectus paresis by the 3 sep test. To avoid erroneous diagnosis of a DVD, one must assess the hypertropia by a cover test rather than by light reflex alone. On cover test, the deviation will be found not to follow Herring's law. A skewed deviation may mimic a fourth nerve palsy on the three-step test. However, in a skewed deviation, the hypertropic eye will often be intorted and performing a prism and alternate cover test shows a 50% reduction in hypertropia in the supine position. A history can help diagnose muscles that have become weak due to surgery. A good history and tensile on testing can help in the diagnosis of myasthenia gravis. Patients with horizontal strabismus often show small vertical deviations. The presence of a large horizontal deviation with a relatively small vertical deviation should alert the clinician to this entity. Here, they do not assume a spontaneous head tilt and subjective and objective tests of torsion are absent. So in summary, the Parks 3-step test consists of determining the side of the hypertropia, whether this hypertropia is greater in right or left case and whether it is greater in right or left head tilt. Additional tests of value include taking a good history, looking for the presence of a secondary deviation, looking for ocular rotations in the various gazes, seeing whether the hypertropia follows Herring's law, looking for evidence of torsion and if there is a change of hypertropia in the supine position. Thank you and have a nice day.